But by, by the way, Ryan, I have no beer. I'll fix that right now. <laughs> He set this whole thing up just to drink free beer over here. You guys know. <laughs> uh, Ryan is bringing me a beer. What am I having? All right. You couldn't hear any of that. Uh, it's a uh, Diablo Dorado, uh, golden strong, all Colorado ingredients. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Bruce Beers is a Belgian house. Uh, and I have known Ryan since actually before they opened this place. We are both alumni of the DU Business School. And so I heard he was getting ready to open a brewery through that network and thought he needs to be my friend. All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks for uh, having us tonight. Can everyone hear us okay? We're in a live working brewery, so <laughs> it could get loud. I'm Ryan Evans. I'm um, Dave Olson. And we're Brews Beers, so we're uh, happy to welcome you into the brewery. We've got a batch of beer going on behind us that's getting finished up. We've got the, the, the bar full of people, and uh, so you'll see some action and hear some sounds. But uh, yeah, we're, we're Brews Beers. We've got two locations in Denver. One's at 67th and Pecos, which we're at now. Uh, that's where we do all of our brewing and uh, have a, a pretty sizable tasting room up here. And then we've got a, a tasting room off of Colfax in New York in kind of the capital area of uh, downtown Denver. So uh, two, two, two different approaches to selling our beer, but, but still the same beer. Uh, we do run a, a little bit of a different list at each location and uh, let, let each site kind of pick what they want to serve and represent for their neighborhood. Uh, Dave's our head brewer, and uh, we're here to kind of run you through uh, the Abbey Series 4 pack that's been created. So I think we're going to start with one of the beers and uh, go from there. You going to do that now or you want to wait for that? Do that now? All right, we're right. on that. I don't know if you made it over to the, to the liquor store or one of our tasting rooms, but we've got this cool box that we created uh, during COVID. Uh, it's called the Abbey Series 4 pack. And it's got a single, a double, a triple, and a quad, all Belgian style beers in the box and the idea was you know we're all stuck at home and want to do beer tastings you can pick this up and run run through a tasting at your house uh, with your family or, or close friends or quarantine buddies or, or whatever you wound up hanging out with the last you know, so Should we start single yeah let's start with the single we'll start with the belgian style single i don't know if you guys are drinking beer at home if you are go ahead and raise a glass and we'll uh we'll do a quick cheers and then we'll crack this single open so Cheers, whatever you're drinking. So I'll start to talk a little bit about single, double, triple, quad, what that is um, in the Belgian world. Um, it, it, it almost is what it sounds like in that a single is a very low ABV beer. Um, this one is 3.8%, so even lower than most of your mass market lagers. Um, and this would have been a beer that, so in the Abbey world, this is a, kind of a beer that the monks would drink. Um, they drink a lot and they don't, they're monks, so they don't want to cons over consume. Um, so a Belgian single at 3.8%, they could do quite a bit of this, replace their water with it even, and, uh, and be able to still consume a lot. So it's a very light colored beer, uh, very low ABV. And um, this one happens to be I mean, they're very clean. So Belgian beers have a little bit of a different yeast character than you normally get in like a lager or an ale or an IPA or something like that. They have uh, a much more complexity to their fermentation profile. And that's all of the yeast drive, yeast derived. So um, this one's gonna have a little bit more delicate in that yeast profile, but more complex than like a lager would be. Lagers are very clean beers. And this will also be the hoppiest of the four that we're trying tonight. Um, you get a real clean, fruity Belgian character with a little bit of like black peppercorn or clove maybe uh, is something that you might get behind there. But more like, almost like juicy fruit gum. You get a little bit of like juicy fruit gum character in this beer. And then there's a nice background of hops that sort of balance out um, the, the uh, fruity and uh, multi characters in this beer. So it's not overly bitter like an IPA would be, but it's nicely balanced. It drinks more like a lager, but much more complex in its fermentation. So that's 
Abby single. Feel free to chime in with any questions uh, anytime. You know, Dave hinted earlier that the, the monks would drink this, and, and he's right. You know, they, they brew, the Abbey's brew over there and take the money from the beer sales, and it supports the Abbey, it supports the church. And so, you know, later on, we'll be trying a, a Belgian style triple, and uh, that's a really high gravity, high uh, shelf beer. And they don't get to drink that. That's that's too valuable to sell for the for the church. But they get the the, the singles, the more sessionable, the, the more lower ABVs, and then they'll occasionally get some of the triples and the quads uh, on special occasions. But uh, so this is you know also if you're in the wine world, which I know a, a lot of you enjoy wine, it'd be like a table wine. It's a table beer. It's a it's a sessionable something you would have with all your family meals, and uh, you could drink a lot of them. It's great in the summer. It's a great patio beer. You can, uh, you know, people call them porch pounders. You can have quite a few in the, in the middle of summer and still wind up uh, making it home. Typically consumed young. Uh, we have a couple of the other beers like quads, doubles, triples. They can sit and age, and a lot of time the brewery will actually age them for a while. But a single is drunk, is, is consumed young, similar to lager. You want to drink it very quickly after it's been brewed. I think that's all we got for the single right now. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? You guys are too easy on us. It's got to be a question. Fire away. And while they're doing that, I would like to point out that there is a delicious smelling food truck right outside of Bruce. So if you're in North Denver or maybe in the Midtown neighborhood, it's called Pico uh, Repas. Uh, and I am unhappy that I do not have some of that in front of me because it smells amazing. So, Bruce Crew, over to you. They are a staff favorite. Because the right bus is a staff favorite, for sure. For sure. So, Belgian double is what we're consuming next. Double is number two, obviously, in a series of four. Um, so, a slightly higher ABV, this one being six, oh, eight and a half percent. Um, and you'll see when I pour it, the Belgian doubles add a little bit more specialty malts or uh, specialty sugars in their beer. So it's a much darker color of beer. However, it's not like a stout or a brown ale and then it has a lot of roasty or chocolatey character, although there's a touch of chocolate character in, it, in a Belgian double. But they're more, um, what's good, like caramely, like yeah, uh, burnt sugars, like dark dark chalk or dark um dark candy sugar kind of a thing like a, a maple candy that you'd suck on sort of so uh, uh, a little higher abv this is the first in their specialty line where stuff that they're essentially making for people that are outside of the abbey although you can get single in the abbeys there um but most people are going for triple really and then double and quad are sort of specialty beers they make for um but still, you know, these can range from six and a half to eight and a half percent, nine percent. Um, still a little bit more drinkable, obviously, uh, uh, higher than like an American lager would be. I saw somebody throwing back Heineken's. That's about a five, five percent, five and a half percent beer, maybe six percent on the high side. This being much larger, much bigger than that in its ABV, but still you could have two, three of them and spread out over an hour and a half period and still be okay to drive. I see a kitty cat in, the, in one of those. Nice. <laughs> Easy yeah. drinking, malty. Malt yeah, it's forward. very malt forward. Very, yeah, like burnt, more burnt sugar. Think more burnt sugar than like brown ale or stout. Um, uh, but still very interesting, very complex. Some of those same characters, fruit forward, a little bit of that juicy fruit character that comes through. Maybe a touch of banana flavor in there. More think more banana runts than an actual banana might taste. And then, um, yeah, those burnt dark sugars and a little bit of, still a little touch of that kind of clovey black peppercorn kind of a touch that is sort of present in all Belgian beers. They're called phenols. There's a difference. There's esters, which are fruity and phenols, which are a little bit sharper and pepperier. And um, so that's something the Belgians do well is balancing those two flavors together with their yeast profile and the, and the way that they ferment. So yeah, that's our Belgian double. You hear Dave talk a lot about yeast. I mean, Belgian style beers are very yeast forward. So there's a lot of beers in the world that are brewed with the yeast and the yeast is literally the workhorse. 
and then they want it to go away. They don't want the flavors, they don't want the esters, they don't want any profiles from the yeast. Belgian style, which is what we specialize in, is very yeast forward. Uh, so as he talks about these yeast flavors changing from the single, double, triple, and quad, uh, we let the yeast shine at this brewery. It's a big part of the, the tasting experience of a beer. Both, uh, you know, you can smell it and you can taste it. And so uh, it's kind of fun to be able to play with that. Of course, it's it's a live organism that is contributing. And so it, it, it changes and you're always battling uh, nature on, on that fact. But uh, yeast is an important part of, of what we do. Yeah, American brewers, it's all about hops, especially right now. It's all about hops. And then fruit. And the Belgians are really the first ones that were using fruit in their beer. But with American beer, it's all about hops. And Belgian beer, very few styles even would have any pop flavor or character to them. So it's very yeast-driven beers, which is why I love them so much. Any questions on that one? We've got to have a question right now. I will, I will ask a question. So that four pack of the, uh, the beers, is that also available directly there at the, the brewery? Yeah, yeah, most certainly. So we sell it in both tasting rooms uh, in that four pack packaging, and then we push it out to wholesale. So a lot of the major liquor stores in the Denver area carry it as well. Um, and if there's not one in your neighborhood liquor store, let us know who that is. And we'll certainly stop by and, and get it there. Uh, it's, it's been a really popular thing to carry this year. And uh, we often have most of these styles available on draft as well at both locations. Not always. Belgian triple, we almost always have available. Uh, Belgian quadruple or quad, we almost always have available. Single double come in and out every here and there. Um, but we almost always have draft available of something that is mimics what's in the four pack as well. You're muted, Les. I am now unmuted. Uh, okay. Um, another thing I will point out, since they talked about yeast, and I was not going to nerd out this way, uh, they make a champagne style beer. Uh, and if you're familiar with how champagne is made, there's a lot of sort of yeast and sugar additions. It's not all done in the beginning. It's super labor intensive. Uh, and I don't know how many people in the country make this style of beer, but it can't be very many because it's a lot of work to make this. They make it and they have it in stock right now, which is also not always true. Uh, so if you're interested in really being experimental with your beer choices, I recommend you come by. We're gonna start, this is how we package that uh, uh, Brut Le Grand, which is our champagne style beer. I saw someone comment about loving champagne. So uh, check this guy out. It might be out in liquor stores, but it's really a tap room focus. Um, we have it on draft as well as in champagne style bottles, corked and caged for your enjoyment and consumption. And, and Les kind of mentioned the labor of love on this one. We brewed it yesterday. Yeah, and it won't be released until November. So, so that's how long it takes to do It takes quite a while. Spirit. And normally it's about a two week process from like uh, brew day to canning day or to kegging day. It's about a two week process. And that beer takes us almost a year. So. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a labor of love. But Belgian triple, this is probably the most popular and you've probably all at least heard of a triple if not tried a Belgian triple before, but Belgian triple, the most popular of the monk brewed beers, um, much larger beer, this one being nine and a half, uh, 10%. Um, but again, this is going to be, so these sort of alternate as you go single, double, triple, quad from uh, dark from blonde colored or, or golden colored beers to dark brown or um, auburn maybe even colored beers. You'll see with the quad when I mean more about that. But um, So this is a, another light colored beer. Um, it's made similarly. So the, the Belgians essentially were trying to capture uh, Pilsner when they were making these styles of beers because they were becoming such popular uh, beers. But they decided let's crank it up a notch to nine and a half, 10 and a half, 11 and a half percent. Um, and we'll throw our fermentation profile into the mix to make it more complex, to make it more interesting. And apparently the Belgians love getting hammered. So Belgian triple was created. Um, these are amazing beers, so fruit forward. Again, with that balance of phenols, which we talked about pepper, clove, 
uh, things like that, and fruit, juicy fruit, gum, peach, plum, touch a banana sometimes in these beers. And this one is right there. And then that alcohol comes through in such a nice way. Like um, it, it, it almost comes across more fruity than it does boozy, but at nine and a half percent, you know, it's there, you know, it exists. Yeah. I always say this is the uh, beer that started the brewery. Uh, I didn't know anything about Belgian style beers and I was backpacking Europe and in college and I had a, uh, a change of trades going on in Brussels and I had a couple hours to kill and I went to a bar and uh, they gave me a menu of beer and I didn't recognize a single thing and I said well what do you drink and uh, the bartender said I'm, I, I like triple uh, triple caramelite and I said all right I'll take one of those and it's changed me I, I it's still my favorite style to this day it's the you know the first real Belgian beer I remember tasting uh, it's also the first beer that we brewed to open the brewery and uh, it's still to this day, like I said, one of my favorites. Uh, tri triples are, if you haven't had a Belgian triple, go out and find one. Most liquor stores will have one uh, in some form or fashion. Uh, get a couple of them if you can and, and compare them because they do range. Uh, but they often come in formats like this. Yep. Not in formats like this. We're one of the few that'll do a triple in a can. So. Any questions yeah, on triple? triple? This is another one of those special ones that the monks would prefer to sell as opposed to drink. But the Belgians love it. Can right, you get guys. that into my house? <laughs> <laughs> Are you in Denver? I am, I'm in Lakewood. Oh yeah, we, oh, Lakewood. Lay on uh, closest liquor Tipsies store. Tipsy's probably has Tipsies. carrying us, yeah. Okay. I don't know how far west you are. Um, Where's your brewery? Um, we are up in uh, Pecos in 67. So we're up in just north of Denver. And then we have a, a location, Colfax in York as well. So okay. cool. Probably about 15 minutes either way to both of those from your place in Lakewood, I bet. Oh, yeah. I stopped cool. by Tipsy's on my way home today. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> you guys want to distribute to Craft Alley? Uh, yeah, you can also get it shipped through Craft Alley, craftalley.com, and Beer Drop uh, as well. They have a program called Beer Drop, which is a beer club, and they ship our, our beer nationwide that way. So if you've got friends or family that, uh, you know, aren't in the Denver area and you want to ship them some, or, or if, uh, you know, if you're not in the Denver area, you can still get it within Colorado that way, too. They should have these four packs as well. So, Brews Crew, I'm going to throw it back to you guys to do my favorite beer style in the world. Oh, yeah, we're, uh, we're going big now. We're going to the top on the quadruple, Belgian-style quad. We're looking at 10.5% on this one, but these can get into the skyrocketing ABV levels. I've seen 13 14% quadruples. Barrel-aged quadruples getting up into maybe 20-plus percent. So it gets a little nutty with this style of beer. This is um, uh, a lot more rare as far as Belgian beers goes, the Belgian quadruple. This one's 10 and a half percent. We didn't go too crazy. We don't, you know, we got people driving home after hanging out. But again, like I said, with alternating colors, light, dark, light, dark, the quadruple goes dark again. So we're using a lot more of those dark, candied brown sugar in this one that gives us you see what i mean by auburn a little bit more auburn here with this color there's a lot of more red tones i mean it's a brown beer but there's you can see through it maybe you're having a harder time than i am but it looks really super gorgeous this ruby garnet highlights and bright beer so we're going to get less some since it's this favorite beer so <laughs> But again, this one, even more of that fruit character because those alcohols, those high alcohols really come through fruity and um, a touch of banana here as well, but more of that juicy fruit, more of that um, peach and apricot characters in this. Again, with that, just that touch of phenol, that pepper, that maybe touch of clove that's in the background, but in balance and, and complex, not overwhelming or sharp like throwing pepper in your mouth you know it's not that at all but again very boozy very strong these are often barrel aged um, you see barrels behind us and we have probably three quads different quads in those barrels that are behind us as well so yeah dark sugars candy sugars plum um 
all those characters. But this is one of those big ones. Not a lot of Belgian breweries make these, but the ones that do uh, are beloved. <laughs> yeah, they're great beers. They're, I, I call it a journey beer because you, you pour a glass, eat 10 ounces of it, and you sit back and you start sipping it and you enjoy it and it warms up and it changes it as you work your way down through the glass. And by the time you get to the bottom of it, it, it it's, it's totally opened up and it's a different beer than what you started with. And then you pour another one and, and kind of go on that journey. Uh, we've got one that we won a Great American Beer Festival medal for that's 13.2%. Uh, it just drinks great. I, I love these in the winter. Uh, when it snows, I crave a fireplace and a quad. And uh, maybe a cigar. And a cigar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you start throwing in the barrel-aged variants, and they're just, they're a, they're a special treat. Uh, Belgian quads are really a special treat. Obviously, uh, you're not going to have four or five of these and drive home, so they're, you know, they're much more of an experience beer for me that, you know, I, I usually have them at home or, or as a celebration for something uh, with some good friends around a fireplace, stuff like that. But, uh, Again, if you look for authentic Belgian versions, you'll more likely see them in this type of a package than in a can. Although you can find them in can, it's mostly us if you find it in a can. Yeah. <laughs> Who here's had a, a Belgian quadruple before? Yeah, we've got oh, a few, huh? Adam. That's it. Adam and Les. All right. PBR and a quad. See, he's got the spectrum covered over here. He knows what he's doing. All right. Uh, so if you guys want to mute, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, food beer pairing. And I'm not a Cicerone, which is what they call the beer version of a sommelier. Um, but I think a quad goes really well with uh, meats that tend to render a fair amount of fat. So like a big juicy burger, a Belgian quad is about as good as it gets uh, to go with that. I think it goes amazingly with lamb. Uh, um, like you said, it's not at all uncommon to find a quad in the um, 12 to 15% range, which is by the way, the typical range for a bottle of wine, right? So think about it, when you're drinking wine, you're drinking a four ounce glass at a time. If I come to the brewery and get a quad, I actually ask for a taster, a baby beer, a four ouncer. Um, Cause if you don't pace yourself while you're drinking quads, you'll be hammered pretty quick. If you get a, a crowler, those big 32 ounce cans of a quad and drink that crowler, it's like drinking more than a bottle of wine yourself. Uh, so you'll be quite impaired uh, at, at the end of that. And as a guy who's been in beer and wine for a while now, I can 100% tell you that beer and wine tastes better when you like and know the people who made it for you. I agree. And these are awesome people here. 